Welcome back. So we're talking about how to use the fast Fourier transform to compress images. Uh, and we walked through the basic idea that when you Fourier transform an image, most of the Fourier coefficients are quite small and can be truncated or thresholded away. So you can zero out all of the small Fourier coefficients, retaining only the largest 1% or 2% of those uh, FFT values. And then when you inverse Fourier transform that thresholded uh, FFT signal, you recover the original image with relatively low uh, degradation. Okay, And so the compression comes about by only saving these largest 1% or 2% Fourier coefficients. Okay, So now we're going to code this up in Python. And here is the Jupyter Notebook. Um, so, okay, we're going to use matplotlib's uh, image package and we're going to import image read so that we can load our image. Uh, and I'm going to load this image of the Afghan girl from National Geographic. So let me run this. It's going to take a moment uh, to plot. Okay, good. So this is uh, the image that we're going to be working with. This is actually a relatively high resolution image. Uh, it looks kind of small here, but this is, I think, about 1400 by 1400 pixels, okay? So this is what we're going to compress. And uh, notice here I have my 256 minus A, where A was the image that I read in. I'm only doing this 256 minus because I've inverted my color scheme for this black background, uh, and these color ranges go from 0 to 256. So if I take 256 minus A, that flips uh, the image color so it looks okay on this inverted scheme. Okay, so next what we're going to do is uh, we're going to Fourier transform this image. So FFT2 is built into NumPy. So we're gonna FFT2 our image uh, and B is uh, essentially B is what happens when you take this A, which has three color channels, R, G, B, um, red, green, blue, and you basically average over all of those color channels, you obtain a grayscale image B. Okay, so I'm going to convert this color image to a grayscale image because I just want to work on an array uh, for simplicity. I don't want to work on three color channels, uh, so I'm only going to work on gray. So B is the grayscale image. So we're going to FFT2 this image, that's uh, you FFT all the rows, then all the columns. Uh, then what I'm going to do, we're going to, this, remember this is an image compression example. So we're going to Fourier transform. Then what we're going to do is we're going to try to keep only the largest 10%, so uh, 0 0.1, 0 0.05, 0 0.01, 0 0.002. We're going to keep the largest 10% of the Fourier coefficients, the largest 5% uh, of the Fourier coefficients, and the largest 1% of the Fourier coefficients. And finally, the largest 0.2% of the Fourier coefficients. And the way we're going to do this is we're going to take our uh, Fourier transform and we're literally going to turn this into a really, really big vector and sort all of the values from largest to smallest. And if we want to keep the top 10% largest values, we just pick the first 10% of that uh, sorted, reshaped FFT, uh, and that will determine what the threshold value is. Okay, so that's how we obtain this threshold value here, is we, we basically turn this into a vector, we sort it, and then we pick the first 10% or the first 1%, 5%, 0.2%. We obtain that value, that's the threshold above which we keep the Fourier coefficients, below which we truncate. And we create this big uh, index matrix here, which basically takes the, um, it finds all Fourier coefficients that have a magnitude larger than threshold, and it sets those values equal to one it, This uh, in this index matrix. This index matrix has zeros and ones, ones where the Fourier coefficient is larger than threshold, zeros where it's smaller than, than uh, threshold, okay? And so that index array is basically going to be a mask, right? It's all zeros and ones, zeros for the Fourier coefficients we want to truncate, ones for the ones we want to keep. And so we dot times, we, we just multiply this element-wise by our Fourier transform B, and what that does is it hard thresholds everything that is uh, smaller than our threshold. So it manually zeroes out everything that's below threshold and only keeps the largest values here. And then finally, we're going to inverse Fourier transform IFFT2 to get back to our original signal here. Uh, and then I'm going to plot that for you. Okay. 
And there's kind of a typo here. This shouldn't be A low, this should be B low um, here, but it doesn't really, really matter, okay? Good, so I'm gonna run this code and we're gonna see what happens. Okay, so it's running now, it's thinking. And we're going to see what the image quality is when I only keep the first 10%, the first 5%, the first 1%, and the first 0.2% of the largest Fourier coefficients, okay? So when I keep the first 10% uh, of the Fourier coefficients, you can see that you get almost perfect uh, image reconstruction. So this looks very, very much like uh, the original high resolution grayscale image. You can see like a strand of hair, details in the iris and cornea, very high fidelity reproduction of this image uh, and a compression ratio of 10. So we've thrown away 90% of the information and only with the largest 10% inverse Fourier transforming, we're able to almost perfectly reconstruct. Similarly, 5% uh, is quite good. It's You'd have to zoom in actually to see any imperfections in this. Um, pretty much all of the features are also being preserved here. Um, even at 1%, yeah, it's really quite good. This is 100 times compression ratio. So we're throwing out 99% of the image uh, information in this image. And again, if you zoomed in, you'd probably have some loss of detail in the iris uh, and in the cornea. But um, really, like for, for the purpose of an image at this size uh, on this screen, you really can't tell the difference. So you can get away with 100 times compression ratio. And then finally, just to make kind of an absurd point, this is 500 times compression, so we're throwing away 99.8%. Finally, you can start to visibly see degradation in the image quality here, right? So this looks like a grainy uh, image. Now we've lost a lot of the kind of the fine details of this image. Um, but, but even up to a compression ratio of 100, you get pretty good compression. So that, that's quite impressive, okay? Okay, so uh, what are some other points I want to make out here? Um, some other points I think are interesting. Uh, sometimes I show pictures of like a fluffy dog and those, you know, a fluffy dog in a grass field. And that's actually harder to compress. So at the same compression ratios, you actually get worse performance. And the reason is, is because hair and fur and grass have a lot of texture. And these are really, there's a lot of high frequency content in hair and fur and grass that actually you need to keep to, to reconstruct that image. And so high frequency stuff uh, is harder to represent. And in fact, this is actually, um, this was a big deal in Pixar when they started making these movies. Uh, so Toy Story was their first one. And if you remember, all of the characters in Toy Story had plastic skin, okay? So every no hair, no fur, uh, no grass. It was all, you know, smooth plastic skin because it's much, much easier to work in a compressed representation uh, and to render those types of objects than it is to render hair and fur and grass. And so it was a big leap uh, from from Toy Story to something like Monsters Inc., where they finally figured out how to render, you know, a big hairy monster because that's that's a lot harder, a lot higher frequency content, a lot more detail that you have to you have to render that you can't kind of just compress out. Okay, so that's kind of interesting too. Uh, also, the larger the image the more compressible it is. So if I have an ultra, ultra high res image, there's more information that's redundant that I can compress out. So I'll get a higher compression ratio, the bigger the image is. And if I have a smaller image, lower res, you need more of those Fourier coefficients to, uh, to reconstruct the image. Okay, so those are all kind of uh, pro tips that you need to keep in mind. And the last thing I wanna show you, this is kind of a fun example. I was actually explaining this to my mom uh, kind of how this image compression works and what the Fourier transform means intuitively. And so I decided to cook up this example where I take this image and I basically plot the pixel intensity as a surface, okay? So you're gonna need a couple of, uh, a couple of Python libraries to make this something that can be rotated. Um, so this is, this is my code here. It's cut off a little bit, um, but you can see nothing fancy. I'm just picking a color map and no edge color. Okay, and this might take a little while to run. Ah, it's pretty fast. Okay, so this is that exact same picture of the Afghan girl, but rendered as a surface plot. So the brighter pixels in, in her face are both brighter and taller in this kind of elevation map, 
Okay, and this is super cool. If we start to rotate this image down, you're gonna see something amazing happen, okay? So we're rotating this down, and this is, I'm claiming her face um, plotted as a surface, and what you can see, if I get this just right, it's a little bit hard to do. Okay, my Python is, uh, is barely cooperating. Yeah, if I get it just right, you can see that this is actually her face kind of as a mountain landscape of pixel intensity. So the, the whites of her eyes are the brightest pixels. Those are the tallest peaks in this uh, kind of mountainous landscape uh, of pixel intensity, okay? And then, you know, her nose is also kind of a mountain structure. And, and all of the, the intensity can be thought of as this topography uh, in this landscape. And so what we're trying to do with our Fourier transform approximation is we're trying to approximate this mountain landscape of the pixel intensity as a sum of sine and cosine waves in X and in Y at, at different frequencies. So we're gonna add up all of those kind of wavy sheets in just the right proportion, in this proportion, and we're gonna reconstruct this topography of, of pixel intensities uh, to reconstruct her face, okay? So I'm just gonna go back uh, and see if I can get this from another perspective. Okay, so this is looking uh, top down right at the image. Let's see if I can grab this and move it down. And again, I'm just gonna move this around a little bit so you can see uh, we're gonna move this out of the plane. Now you can start to see that there's actually this mountainous landscape to represent all of those pixels and their intensity. Okay, so I think that's a really cool visualization to help you understand that these images, uh, kind of the, the intensity of these images do in fact form some kind of a three-dimensional intensity landscape, if you will. And this is kind of what we're trying to approximate with our Fourier transform using these wavy, uh, these wavy sheets in XY. Okay, and I always think of, you know, two people, uh, four people on on all four sides of a bed sheet, so they hold it tight and they start pumping the bed sheet in the x direction at some frequency, they pump the bed sheet in the y direction at some frequency, and they get this standing wave. That's one Fourier coefficient. And if you add all of those standing waves up in just the right proportion, you'll reconstruct this landscape with those two mountain peaks at the eyes and, and every other feature, and you'll actually reconstruct uh, that, that face. Okay, so that's image compression using the FFT. Next, we're gonna look at uh, wavelet image compression. Okay, thank you.